Okay, so um, good morning, welcome. Um, it's good to be here. Um, you know, my name is Ignacio. I am the director of the Open Nebula Open Source Project. Well, uh, you know, this is our uh, favorite week of the year because uh, thanks to your feedback, we are able to know about your experiences, about your needs, so that helps improve our, our product. Um, this is our seventh conference. Uh, we organized our two first conferences in 2013 and 2014 in Berlin. Then we organized two um, editions in Barcelona in 2015 and 2016. Uh, last year, we uh, organized two different conferences in the US and in Europe, in Boston and in Madrid. And today, we are here in, in Amsterdam. This first presentation is an introductory talk. Our aim is to describe our program. architect will give the uh, technology view and finally uh, Michael our new community manager will give the community view okay so um, from a strategic perspective so this is a very good question in this conference what's open nebula okay uh, of course you know what open nebula is you have been you probably you are uh, evaluating or you are, are running an open nebula instance or at least you participated in yesterday's uh, tutorials so you know that open nebula is a turkey solution for private cloud computing and data center virtualization you know that compared with other cloud management platforms uh, open nebula is light and simple so we design it and we try to develop a product that is easy to install is easy to maintain is easy to operate and is easy to use so it's easy for all stakeholders involved in a cloud infrastructure. Uh, it's flexible, so we try to design a system which is uh, modular, so you have a core, a kernel in the system, and you have different drivers to interact with the underlying platforms. Uh, it's robots, so this is enterprise-ready technology, production-ready, uh, so it's stable, it's scalable, and of course it's supported. Um, finally, it's Powerful. It's simple but powerful. This is very important for us. We provide some features, we will describe some of them in the context of this conference, that are unique and not provided by other uh, cloud management uh, vendors. One important message for us is that we only have one Open Nebula distribution. This is very important for us, extremely important, I would say. You see, other products, open source products, are not a single a project. There are many different projects, and you have to integrate them in order to build something functional. In our case, we provide a single Open Nebula distribution, and of course, you know that distribution is open source and at the same time is enterprise ready. So it's not that we have an open, a vanilla open source distribution and then we create an enterprise edition with some additional features for the enterprise. In our case, we have a single distribution, a single product, and this is open source at the same time is enterprise ready. Uh, you know that we have been in the market uh, for about uh, 10 years. We have released 100 versions of Open Nebula and we have also, also tried to uh, release this software as a single package. So we also think that delivery of the software is very important. And we have also tried to deliver a single package with a very clear, a great uh, procedure. In our uh, view, uh, Open Nebula is like the open source or the private cloud. This is the open source and the operating system of the private cloud. This is our view about Open Nebula. So if you see the internals of a private cloud, you see a cloud management platform like Open Nebula, which is responsible for the managing of the underlying uh, physical resources. With Open Nebula, you can manage the physical storage, the physical machines, the physical networking. At the same time, you see that um, Open Nebula is uh, offer services for the execution of the virtualized uh, workload. And with Open Nebula, you are able to manage sharing of the infrastructure when you have several different users, that is the multi-tenancy. That's the reason why we see Open Nebula as the operating system of the private cloud. And we know that with Open Nebula, you can build different private cloud architectures. Uh, this is the more basic architecture. This is the on-premise architecture. You know that in this case, you have your own data center. You spend on your infrastructure. 
and you keep the infrastructure on site, in house. Okay, this is the more basic private cloud infrastructure. In this particular case, you deploy this type of solutions because you have a steady workload. This is, you don't have variability, so you don't have to go to the public cloud. Moreover, you have a predictable demand, or maybe it's because you have security concerns and you want to keep data inside, okay? Or maybe because you need some special devices for high performance. So these are typical uh, reasons to build your uh, on-premise infrastructure. This is the more basic deployment. With Open Nebula, you can build a hosted private cloud. This basically, that means that the infrastructure is not on site. The infrastructure is uh, provided or hosted by a service uh, provided. And you know that you pay a monthly or hourly or daily uh, rate to access the, the resources. No? Uh, one very good example is uh, building a uh, Open Nebula Cloud using one of the new uh, bare metal uh, cloud providers. Uh, in the last uh, few months, we have uh, published two guides. One is about how to build an Open Nebula Cloud hosted in Packet. Packet is a bare metal cloud provider where you pay for physical resources per hour. And you know that AWS announced a couple of months ago the new uh, 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 metal instances. So we also published a guide about how to uh, build uh, Open Nebula hosted infrastructure using these biometrical cloud providers. In these cases, uh, you build this type of infrastructure, the hosted private cloud, because you have a variable workload, or maybe because you have unpredictable demand, or sometimes it's because you need a cloud for a short period of time, maybe because you are doing evaluation, testing, of development. Okay. Uh, the third architecture we see that uh, you are building with Open Nebula or our users uh, build uh, with Open Nebula is a distributed private cloud. In this case, you are combining both the on-premise and the hosted models. So basically, this could mean that you are uh, supporting different types of workloads, steady workloads or variable workloads, and you need to combine your own on-premise resources okay, and the resources provided by a service provider. This is when you have both types of workloads, or maybe because you have different data centers, or maybe because you have geo-distributed uh, workloads. There is one very interesting variation of this architecture, which is the edge private cloud, that basically means that you have your own on-premise infrastructure, and you know to grow, you need to grow with edge resources, with resources at the edge, okay, to minimize latency with uh, your end users. In those cases, you can also build a cloud infrastructure where a single Open Nebula instance is able to manage your resources locally, and moreover, access on demand to resources hosted at the edge. There are some uh, bare meta cloud providers like Edge, that, sorry, like Packet, that they provide those resources at the edge. And we have uh, developed, you know, we are developing the required uh, tooling to uh, provide on demand this access to the resources at the edge. This is basically when. Uh, you, have, you want to access to edge locations, or you have low latency uh, workloads. Uh, another um, cloud architecture, private cloud architecture, is the federated cloud environment. In this case, you can have several Open Nebula instances. You could have one instance running on one, a couple of instances running on two data centers, on premise data centers in different geographic locations, and you can build a new instance hosted in a, you know, by a service provider, and you can build this uh, federation of instances. Typically, you do this when you need very large scale infrastructures, or maybe because you want to isolate the different uh, data centers, because each data center contains a different admin domain. Another um, approach we, we support is the hybrid uh, private cloud. You know that with Opera Nebula, you can burst uh, VM workload to existing public cloud uh, providers. Basically, we provide connectors to uh, interact with AWS and Microsoft Azure. So basically, our main message today in this first um, uh, presentation from a strategic view is that uh, we are all about private cloud computing. You know that with Open Nebula, you can build your own permits, private cloud. With Open Nebula, you can grow your private cloud with resources. Okay, that are hosted okay, by a service uh, provider. 
You can also grow your private cloud with resources at the edge if you have low latency requirements. You can also federate. That means that you can have several Open Nebula instances running in different um, data centers, in different uh, geographic locations, and you're interested in having all uh, coordinated. And moreover, you are also able to uh, do cloud bursting with Open Nebula. This is all about private cloud computing. This is not about broken itself, because we also think that the first part is to have your own uh, resources on premises, and you have the need to grow the resources with different type of approaches. Uh, this is um, about what's up in Nebula, but what's new? Well, in the uh, coming one, two months, uh, we are releasing uh, two uh, new features that we think uh, are extremely interesting. Uh, I'm going to very briefly summarize these features, but then uh, later in the agenda of uh, the conference, you will have uh, presentation for these uh, features. The first one is the automatic host provision. Basically, we are uh, building, we are offering a new tool, a new command, which is the one provision. With one provision, uh, Open Nebula will be uh, able to interact with the uh, remote bare metal cloud providers. In principle, we are releasing the connectors to packet and metal instances in AWS, and the idea is that with one provision, OpenAWS is able to communicate with this bare metal cloud provider, deploy a physical resource, then is able to install all the software needed using Ansible uh, playbooks, all the software needed to build a cluster on those physical resources and register that uh, cluster with uh, the OpenNebula instance. So this is an approach to grow your infrastructure at physical uh, layer. So it's quite interesting. I will allow you to build your infrastructure that can grow on demand while you can keep using all the images and all the configurations you have with Open Nebula. So this is fully transparent to the end users of the, of the cloud. And basically, this is a new functionality you know, for uh, dynamic resource aggregation. You know, if you want to build hybrid, distributed, or edge private clouds. This is. Uh, the first feature, Blastimil at uh, 10, will give an overview and a brief demo of this uh, new feature. And the second one is the container support. You know that with Open Nebula now, we support KVM and we support VMware uh, hypervisors. And in the uh, next release of Open Nebula, we are supporting uh, containers, uh, system containers. In particular, we are supporting LXC, LXD uh, Linux containers. So. Uh, this will be an important uh, functionality because uh, we will support these containers and we, these containers, we will keep all the support that now we provide with KVM. Basically, you will able, be able to use containers with full support for storage and networking drivers, all features that we provide for multi-tenancy, orchestration, and provision of features okay, offered by OpenNebula will be available when using these uh, system containers. And also, we are uh, delivering the, this uh, software with the integration with public image remote posts. There are many repos around that provide uh, images uh, for LXD. And the idea is that our uh, Open Nebula will be uh, integrated with these repos. So you will have access to the repos and very easily download and deploy any image that is available there. OK, so we will have a talk by Ruben at 10, uh, 15. He will give more information about this new functionality. And now, uh, Ruben will give an overview of the technology part. OK, so just a brief uh, review of uh, our last year in terms of the um, technology. So during this last year, I mean, um, since um, last time we met in the Open Ebola Conf in, in Madrid, um, we've been releasing Open uh, 5.4 series uh, with uh, 11 hotfix releases and two maintainer releases. And we've been able to do two more releases for the new 5.6 um, series. We have one Fox fix, one upgrade, and one maintenance. We have changed a bit our um, releasing philosophy in order to adapt what the community is, um, or the way the community is um, consuming our, our software. Um, 
This uh, graph here is um, the, um, the way we, we were releasing uh, before 5.4. So we, we take long release cycles with big future increases. So kind of the release risk, the, 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 the time of the, or the period of time where things may broke was um, uh, big. So uh, most of, of you doesn't agree to we have uh, um, a capital of maintenance or hot feed releases and, uh, on, on, the, on, on the fly. So um, um, we changed that in 5.4. So we release um, more often with these um, hot fix and maintenance releases. Um, and we start backporting some uh, features that doesn't require any um, um, upgrades of configuration or database uh, schemas and that kind of thing. So um, uh, it seems that you are adopting that uh, quickly and uh, we are able to deliver new features uh, more agile to, to, the, to the community. So we, um, we are shifting to that model. Uh, we are not completely right that year yet. Um, we still want to um, in, um, ease our upgrade process, so it's, it, it's even easier to upgrade in terms of managing the configuration files and that kind of things. But yeah, the idea is to um, deliver um, more frequently the features we, uh, we develop. We also have introduced this hotfix versus maintenance, so we have some of the, all the um, software is uh, open source, but some of the builds are, are not. Um, some of the people in the community are building packages, so um, somewhere is, uh, is still there. So that's uh, more or less the, uh, in terms of uh, new um, um, releasing process. Um, here are some statistics from, from, from a Git. Uh, we, we managed to, be, to make um, 2,000 commits, um, uh, 700k um, uh, uh, lines added and, uh, or changes. Um, you also couple of thousands in, uh, in terms of documentations. Uh, 200 issues were created in GitHub since, since we moved. And uh, we increased the number of languages in our, uh, for Sandstone. So right now we have 16 languages above 17%. And um, uh, around 10 are uh, almost completely uh, translated, uh, above 90% uh, of uh, um, one, 1,500 strings, so it's uh, really quite nice. This is also, uh, only or mostly um, a community effort. Um, uh, futures, so we, just um, a quick um, um, preview of, uh, or, or uh, review of, uh, of the features we introduced. Um, in 5.6, um, we, we, we really streamlined the vCenter driver improving the uh, import process, uh, marketplace uh, in, in import, so also the drivers when, uh, are, are receiving a lot of um, love from, from the team in order to um, uh, um, improve the, the, the coding. Um, there are also a couple of uh, features that were funding by, by, by the community. We have uh, new quotas for, for running resources, so you can account for the running uh, uh, the memory use and CPU use for, for VMs that are actually running. We also have this create as, so you can create resources using the identity of a, of a user directly from the API. Those, those both two were funded from, for, for, um, by, by the community. And also we have uh, this, um, this is really also very, very nice, which is uh, multiple transfer modes for, for the storage, so you can uh, combine different uh, storage uh, drivers in the, in the same data store. So you can use Ceph and local storage at the same time. That was also founded and, and it's uh, really nice. 5.8, um, as Ignacio said, we are working in L LXD. Uh, we are working in the uh, provisioning, but um, we have also a, a couple of features that has been uh, or are really, really nice also. Uh, LXD is, uh, is being funded also for, by, by um, by one of our customers. And um, 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 we have uh, another fun feature, which is this automatic selection of virtual network, which is a really, really useful feature. So the scheduler now is going to be able to pick the right network for a given template. So you don't have to 
uh, specify which network you have, and this will re reduce the clutter in your in your VM template list um, because you don't have to duplicate the uh, um, uh, uh, templates in order to pick up the, the, the networking. So the algorithm is the same. We have a scheduling, rank, and matchmaking for for the network selection, and uh, I think it's going to be very very useful for you. And also uh, another important thing is performance and scalability improvements. We are talking with. Uh, People running very big infrastructures. You are going to see uh, with Herman in one of uh, these examples. And this is an area we want to improve. And uh, uh, there is some work in 5.8, but this is something we, we will be working in in the, in the coming uh, months. And uh, also, we, 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 uh, we are working on self provisioning. This, uh, this is also uh, almost done. And uh, the idea is that have like uh, network uh, stores or data stores or network templates, so users can create networks their own. And, uh, and um, uh, in terms of the address ranges or uh, IP address spaces, so uh, this is uh, what what are we working on and what we been working during this uh, during this year. Um, I think that the next is Michael, which is going to give you an overview of uh, the community. That's great. Thank you, Thank you Ruben. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Michael Abdu. Um, I'm going to take some time to talk about the Open Nebula community. Um, one of the special and unique dynamics about Open Nebula, uh, particularly in comparison to some of its competitors, is that it's a product that's really driven and shaped by the user community. Um, my job as the community manager is to make sure that we maintain a vibrant, rich, and energetic community of users. Um, so much of what comes through the, the Open Nebula product, um, including its success and evolution, really comes from comp contributions from you. Um, so we're going to fo just focus on, on three different ways that you can contribute to the community. The first is use the tool, right? Get your hands on it. I, I like to say kick the tires and, and test it out. And then share your feedback, right? Bring your experiences back to the, the user community so that they can learn. Uh, the next is, is through code, right? So Open Nebula is a fully open sourced product. Um, it's Apache 2.0 licensed. And here you really have an opportunity to make tangible contributions to, um, to Open Nebula. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our add-ons catalog and, and our fund our uh, fund a feature program. And lastly, it's it's about getting involved, right? So we're looking to you to help kind of promote and share, spread the word to the to the broader public about Open Nebula. So using Open Nebula, right, we at Open Nebula Systems, we think pretty highly of the, of our of our product, right? Um, we know that it can serve a, a broad market. So right now, I think we have. Um, over 4,500 different clouds. Um, we also know that it can scale, right? So one of the biggest ones that we're aware of has 300,000 cores across 16 different data centers, right? So, um, but we're looking to continue this, this type of growth. Here's just a, a quick overview of some of the users of, of Open Nebula, right? And I think if you take a look, we've got a, really a, a, a varying you know, uh, a mixture of, of companies of varying sizes across different, different domains. Um, really, I think it's a testament to its flexibility, but also the fact that it's really an enterprise and, and production-ready tool. Um, again, these are just a few examples of some of the users. What we're looking to say is, you know, I think the more users we have, the richer our community, and I think that translates to really a better product. So one thing is to use Open Nebula. Um, I think what's even more important is, is also to share your experiences. Um, whether you find a, a way to, to post a blog on, on our site or yours, um, you know, I urge you to, to tell your story. Right? Tell what are your experiences with Open Nebula? Um, what are the things that have been working well? And, and what are the things that you think need improvement? Um, so much of what we want to promote is really a, a, is building a collaborative and open environment. We also have our developers forum, right? So right now, I think we have over 1,700 users there. It's really a great tool for open discussion. Um, you know, ask questions, and 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 if you can, answer some, right? So um, our Open Nebula team 
there's no there's no way we could answer all the questions and queries that come through. Um, but I also think that you have you come with unique perspectives and practical experiences and how you're using Open Nebula. So I think that even adds additional value. So, um, and one one more thing, don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid to contribute. Don't be don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, we all learn from not only from you know um, our experiences, but also the questions and doubts that we have. So get out there. Um, secondly, our, our code of Open Nebula, as uh, Ruben pointed out, right? So within the past year since our last conference, we had 16 different releases of Open Nebula. Um, and a lot of those, a good portion of that comes through contributions from you. One of the things that we did this past year is we reverted to um, reverted, no, we, we started using GitHub as a version control repository, right? It's one of the you know mainstream tools. It's easy to use, easy to manage. Um, but here, here's where if you have bug fixes or new features for Open Nebula, contribute it to our, our GitHub, our GitHub project. We also have our uh, add-on repository, right? So this is where you can. You know, I urge you to lead a new add-on, or you can use the developer form and find out what's happening out there and, and work to contribute to an existing one. Another way you can help to contribute in terms of code is, is help translate our Open Nebula front end, right? So right now we have a, a project in TransFX. It's, we've got f currently 41 different project languages. A few of them are fully complete, right? But a, a broad majority of them are in some level of, of needing uh, contributions in terms of translations. And the good thing is you can really translate one string at a time. So help us out there. And we have a fund a feature program. So this is quickly where you, you have a feature or functionality that you really want to see included in, in the Open Nebula product. You come to us, you, we can provide you a statement of work, right? so that our Open Nebula systems team carries out the development, the testing and implementation, and implementing that function, functionality or feature in an upcoming release. You as the, the funder get acknowledged for, for funding that, that feature. However, that, that functionality becomes part of, of the, the, the release to, you know, to the public. And today I just want to take a, a moment to thank our Fund a Feature collaborators from this past year. Uh, we had Activision, King, FlexYZ, CA Technology, and the University of Louvain. Thank you. And lastly, get involved, right? Um, one way that you can get involved is, is collaborating as a, as a part of our ecosystem of partners. Um, you know, at Op Open Nebula Systems, we're not here trying to create market-specific solutions. We're, we're technology-driven. Uh, so much of what we're trying to do is, requires building strong strategic uh, partnerships. So we have built a, a, partner, a partners program, um, five different partner program. If, if you, you could check out details on our website, but if you want more details as well, you can come talk to me. Uh, let's see. We have our tech days as well. So this past year we had five different tech days across the US and, and Europe. Um, Tech days are really one-day workshops with hands-on tutorials and, and often include presentations and use case reviews of, of customer or community members. It's a great way to equip your team with, with skills and insights to bring back to your organization as well as to, to network with the community. Um, so I want to thank you know, the folks and, and companies who, who sponsored one this past year. Um, I also want to say think about hosting one of your own. And, and now, thank you for getting involved with, with the Open Nebula conference. Um, for those of you who participated in the hands-on tutorial yesterday, we hope that was of value. Um, we're really excited about the, the agenda we have today. And the conference here, I also want to point out that it is, this is not a sales and marketing event, right? It's, it's really an educational event where we're here to talk about cloud technology, talk about Open Nebula, and really share experiences of users and our, our peers. So just a quick thanks to all of our speakers we got lined up for today. I'm going to talk quickly about two different agenda items. And I know we're trying to 
get back on, on schedule here, but um, the first is the lightning talks. These are, we have this schedule at 3.30 this afternoon. They're five minute talks, right? We're trying to limit them to three slides and really focus on one, one specific point, whether it's a use case, a demo. Um, so right now we have three different uh, lightning talks scheduled, but if there anyone out, anyone out there has a, has a desire to, to take a slot, let me know, or actually reach out to Tino as well. Tino's right here. He'll help coordinate. And secondly, throughout the day, so starting this morning through the end of the day, we're offering you know 15-minute slots if you want to talk to our our experts in, in Open Nebula systems, right? So we, again, reach out to Tino. We can schedule to, to take some time out in, in another room and, and discuss your your questions or inquiries. Lastly, a quick thanks to all of our sponsors for helping to make the this Open Nebula conference happen. Uh, a big thanks to you. Um, one last thing, and I talked to a, a few folks last night. Begin thinking about where you think you'd like to have the Open Nebula conference uh, for this coming year, in 2019, and give us some feedback. All right? So a big thanks, and uh, we're ready to kick this off.